Hey, welcome to a Throwback Thursday. This one is going to be unique this morning. It's going to be very different. <laughs> and this is just too much fun. Here's the backstory. My good buddy Glenn Clark and his wife Robin were moving from California to the Carolinas. And about a week or so after Thanksgiving, I got this box, which I can't even close again because it was packed so full of memorabilia from the photo industry and their classics. Now, I'm going to go through the box and it's kind of fun because today as I'm recording this, uh, Glenn and Robin just had the moving truck show up at their new home on this coast and they're unpacking their stuff. So this is stuff that Glenn just didn't want to travel with but it's classic and it's too much fun not to share and it's throwback thursday so this is the first thing that came out of the box now i didn't realize these weren't even throwbacks somewhere stashed at wppi these were out there last year at the show just just less than a year ago and i missed it but glenn knowing my relationship with wppi for so many years said okay this should go to skip the next one that's a true classic he sent me two sweatshirts he had, Hasselblad University sweatshirts. Now, what people don't know about Hasselblad University is the very first program was a complete, total, dismal failure. In fact, we had to cancel it, but the logo won an award. And he had one in blue. This is all in this one little box, everybody. And then he had, and then he had a white one. I don't think these have even been worn. These are classics. Now, the other part of this on Hasselblad University, when we launched Hasselblad University, I was president of Hasselblad at the time, and I was furious because Henry Froelich, God bless him, who was president of Mamiya America Corporation at the time, launched an ad campaign thanking Annie Leibowitz for um, congratulating her on a new exhibit she had. It didn't say she photographed with Mamiya, but it inferred it. And that just got me going. It's like, okay, we have all these Hasselblad icons out there that are shooting with Hasselblad gear. They're all famous. Let's go ahead and launch Hasselblad University. And we came up with two programs. One was going to be in Santa Barbara uh, using uh, some of the areas of the Brooks campus and the other one was going to be at RIT. Well, here's what I failed to realize. First of all, it was the very last week of the summer. It was the most expensive nights of the year for anybody to get lodging in Santa Barbara. Second, nobody really wanted to go to Rochester. Now, Rochester is a great town and RIT is a great campus, but if you had your choice between the two, you'd go to Santa Barbara. Well, the bottom line was, it was just too expensive for people to handle the airfare, the lodging, and I guess the time away from the business. So again, the program was a dismal failure, but the logo won an award, and then that led into all the Hasselblad University programs we did, and in fact, it's when I talked my good buddy, Tony Corbell, into becoming uh, the first dean of Hasselblad University and moving from Santa Barbara to a parking lot in New Jersey, um, which was that I consider that one of the greatest marketing sell jobs um, in the industry. I mean, how do you talk somebody up into giving up their view of the mountainside and the ocean on the Pacific coast for a parking lot in New Jersey? But Hasselblad University became the educational arm for Hasselblad. More things in the goodie box. Um, Oh, let's see. Uh, to my dear friend, Robin, you are great. Thanks. Um, Don Blair, two Don Blair hats. Now, Don Blair was notorious for wearing, this was one of his signatures, wearing this, these red driving, his red driving hat. And when we launched Body Parts, which was Don's, Don and I did a book together. It's the first book I did. Don and I had a program set up. It was the opening night before WPPI kicked off that year. And that's when we were also introducing the book. And everybody, unknown to Don, everybody in the audience, or at least the first 10 rows, I think we bought 300 of these hats that people had on. So um, 
Glenn buddy, um, I, I love it. I've got your two Don Blair hats if you ever need them back. Here's a real classic. Uh, uh, the Kodak race car. There it is. Kodak Perfect Touch came from the processing division. Um, now detects and reduces red eye and it was a matchbox car with the Kodak logo from the track. Then we got into other crazy things. Not sure why this is in here. Let's see what it is. I'm guessing it's a loop. Yes, it is a loop. Um, all right, compliments of Burrell Professional Labs. If you know Glenn's background, when I first met him, he was with Burrell. Um, and they did, they obviously did a uh, loop one year. Then we've got a whole series of pins here. WPI, this is before the, the, the portrait got added. So it was Wedding Photographers International initially. Um, other buttons here, once, uh, once Upon a Lifetime, Burrell, and PPA, oh, many years ago, did an extensive study and um, came up with a new logo for their pin. Not sure why this is here, but California can't earthquake. I'm told it has a battery inside. The battery is obviously dead because it doesn't shake anymore. Then we get into uh, Skip Summer School 2012. Levi Sim had these made up and it was a combination between Smug Mug Pro and Skip Summer School. It was actually a pretty nice, comfortable neck strap. Those were available. Um, Photo Focus, this is new. This is from this last show, photofocus.com. One of the, if not one of, it is the largest um, a blog, website, resource on photography. There's so much good information being launched there literally every day. These I'll probably, I'll probably scan, but we've got our, the ASP Fellowship and Terry Daglo um, that year. This is the one they ran where it had the in memoriam of Terry from last fall. Terry was very active in ASP and PPA. And for those of you that don't know him uh, or didn't know him, it's your loss. But I will say he is responsible for the incredible legacy we have in this industry of so many great photographers and great products. He was the connection between Kodak when they were at the top of their game and the professional photographic community. And last but not least, um, we had a whole bunch of Skip's summer school, things that he hung on to. Again, remember, he's at home, he's at home cleaning out his garage so that he doesn't have to move this stuff from the West Coast to the East Coast, and he decided to send it my way. So Skip Style 2011, and last but not least, and some of these I'm going to scan, and I'll put in the blog post today, um, but it's all of uh, Glenn's business cards, including uh, Glenn Allen Clark, the one he made up himself, um, when he started to kick off his career. So, Glenn Buddy, um, as you're unpacking your box today, it's your box, your boxes, and a moving truck um, in the Carolinas. I am so glad to have you on the East Coast. Thank you for sending me this goodie box, and what a kick to be able to share it with all of you on Throwback Thursday. It's a classic, especially, especially that little Kodak NASCAR. There it is. Try and find one of those anymore today. So happy Throwback Thursday, everybody. Stay safe and healthy. And if the quality of this video is terrible, trust me, it's the best that I could do. Take care.